Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Good morning. Well, welcome. I'm Joel. I'm the teaching guy here, and we're going to continue our series today called Tired. Every time I say that, somebody laughs, because I think we can all relate to just being tired. Last week, we looked at this verse. It's kind of the premise for the whole series, where Jesus says, come to me. All you who are tired, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We talked last week about the fact that we all, holy cow, it's foggy in here. Like, have I gone to heaven? Uh, And all you lovely angels. All right. We talked about how we've all got a, we do have a burden to carry. Like if you're looking to get through life without carrying a burden, that's not going to happen. And it's in that carrying that burden that we find meaning and purpose. You mothers here, you know what that's like, right? Happy Mother's Day to all of you, by the way. Uh, Mothers know what it's like to carry the burden of like, you have this helpless child right here and you go, I got to carry this burden. And and that's part of the, the, the gift of fulfillment that God gives us comes through carrying the burden that he's given us. But if you're carrying a burden and life feels too heavy for you, like it's impossible, there's a good chance carrying something you weren't meant to carry alone. So we talked about that last week, how Jesus says, hey, I want you to link up with me. A yoke is something they would put on two oxen when they would pull through uh, breaking up hard ground, and the two oxen would pull together. And if one got ahead of the other one, one would carry more weight. If one got behind the other one, that one would carry more weight. But when you stayed in lockstep, you had the weight split. And Jesus is saying, I want to help you carry the weight of the things in life that you just feel like you can't carry. So we're talking about this idea of being tired, and this week I want to talk, so we're talking about the the burdens we carry that he's not calling us to carry alone, and I want to talk this week about the burden of loneliness. Um, The first time I ever experienced loneliness is I had been, I just graduated from college a few years earlier, and I had been traveling around the world pretty much nonstop. I backpacked through Australia and New Zealand, we were through, going through Asia, and I remember one, one day, uh, I was actually at the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. It's the largest barrier reef in the world. And I'm on this boat, and I've been scuba diving, and I get out, and I'm thinking, this is so amazing. But I have nobody to share this experience with. And I was having a great time. Like, I could do whatever I wanted. All those backpacking trips, I'd just, like, I'd find somebody going here, I'd go with them, and then I'd be like, eh, I'm bored with you. I'd move on and go with somebody else, and, you know, travel all over the place. It, it was kind of reminding me of this African proverb. It says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And we talked last week about how I like to do stuff fast. So sometimes people get in my way. And they slow me down, man. Don't slow me down. I hate being slowed down. Anybody relate to that? Then you have kids and everything slows down. So we're going to talk about that today. Um, You know, loneliness is an—it's like an epidemic high right now in our world. And I was thinking about like, what are some of the causes of loneliness? A lot of them are stuff we just did to ourselves. Uh, One is isolation. Um, we're just isolated in our, in our world today. Everybody's got their homes, and you go from your air-conditioned house to your air-conditioned car to your air-conditioned gym with your AirPods in, so nobody has to talk to you or look at you. Uh, yesterday, we're Emily, at least Emily and I went to the gym, and we're sitting in a sauna, and this guy started talking to us, and we're like, what's this guy's problem? <laughs> like, and every other word he had was like an F-bomb, wasn't it? Like, I'm like, dude, there are other adjectives. Like, anyway. But it's weird. Like, isn't it weird when somebody strikes up a conversation, you're like, what does he want from me? Yeah. We've become so isolated, right? And another thing that's caused, social media has caused isolation. What are we all walking around doing? If you ever go to the airport, it's so fascinating to me. You guys, like 10,000 people in a waiting area, and everybody's like this. We're, we're together, but we're completely isolated. Yeah. Another thing, if it wasn't bad enough already, let's shut down the world. Ten days to slow the spread. <laughs> and we're isolated. And it just compounds. And it wasn't just like that little period of time. It was the residual effects that we're still feeling of kids that have been isolated. Anxiety in, in our youth has never been higher. 
In fact, it's gotten so bad that in England, check this out. They just appointed this lady named Tracy Crouch. She is the world's first minister for loneliness. She's a government official, which brings to mind something Ronald Reagan said. The scariest line in the English language is, hi, I'm here with the government and I'm here to help. (laughs) The government has decided things are so bad, we need to get in the business of curing loneliness. The problem is loneliness is a soul issue. And governments can never fix soul issues, which is why I'm in the business I'm in. Did y'all know I got a degree in political science? I was going to get into politics and save the world. And then I discovered, man, you know how you really save the world? You talk to the guy who already saved it. And you get people connected with him. And when the heart changes, everything else changes. So if we're going to try and cure this loneliness thing, it has nothing to do with what's going on around us. Because I know a lot of you, you feel alone even though you're with a group of people. Some of you feel alone in your marriages. You feel like you're in the same house together, but you're completely alone. And the loneliness, it's a spiritual issue. And that's something that C.S. Lewis talked about like this. He said, he said, this is a fascinating statement. He says, if I find myself in myself desires which nothing in this world can satisfy, the only logical explanation is that I was made for another world. And some of you are going, man, I just can't get no satisfaction. And you're wondering why. And it's because you've been looking to the wrong things to cure that need within your heart. And loneliness is no exception to that. A lot of loneliness comes down to, I think, kind of the way we see the world. So I've been thinking about, like, I was thinking about the, kind of the two ways that people are divided up, right? They're, everybody in this room kind of fits in one side of this spectrum of introversion versus extroversion. And the way introverts experience loneliness is very different than extroverts experience loneliness. Introverts, we actually in some ways like loneliness. I am an introvert. Okay, so the difference between an introvert and an extrovert is basically how you get your energy. Introverts, they seek less stimulation. They just kind of want peace and quiet. They recharge and reflect in quiet. They think before they speak. Um, Value one-on-one friendships. This is an interesting line because what this means is the other people don't. But anyways, uh, I don't know if I agree with that statement. I just stole this off of Wikipedia, which is the source of all knowledge. So... Uh, they favor independence, right? So oftentimes they seem like, well, wouldn't, like, you know, they're the ones that go to the movie by themselves. And people are like, wasn't well, that lonely? No, we like it. In fact, the less people there are in the movie with us, the better it is. <laughs> they avoid being the center of attention. Um, this is not, again, generalized, right? And then they value deep experience. I am an introvert. Most people don't believe that because they're like, you get up in front of people, and I've told you this before, I do get up in front of people and I talk, and then I have to sleep the rest of the day. It sucks the energy out of me. You guys suck the energy out of me. (laughs) I'm just kidding. I love what I do, and I'm grateful for what I do, but it's the reality of it. Pastor Marcus is an introvert as well, okay? So sometimes you're like, wow, why did Pastor Marcus just take off? Because the dude's tired, (laughs) right? He's just, he's had people just that need him, and he's such a a great, amazing pastor pouring out his heart, but there's only so much the guy can pour out. And that's why sometimes he's like, go talk to Natalie, because Natalie (laughs) is an extrovert. So I want to talk about the different way, you know, as I was preparing this message, I was like, you know, I can talk all day long about how introverts experience loneliness, but do you know we live in an extroverted culture, and most of you probably are extroverts. So I wanted to bring up the most wonderful extrovert I know, and have her talk a little bit about loneliness, because she's experienced a lot of loneliness, and um, not since she's married me, of course, but, <laughs> but Emily, come on up, and it's Mother's Day, she's an amazing hey. one, so yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so, so Joel gave me the gift of coming to talk about the dark nights of my soul on Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's what I do. So... I want to talk specifically about something that really stood out to me. It was right after our daughter was born. I thought life had never been better. And we were on a walk, um, pushing our little daughter in a stroller around this beautiful park in Houston. I was like, isn't life so great? And she was quiet. (laughs) And I was like, "Uh, isn't life so great? She's like, well, maybe for you, but I, I feel kind of alone. And I remember thinking, what? alone. And I realized, man, she experiences life completely differently than me. So talk a little bit about that. We'll start that as a jumping off point for what was going on in your heart when you said, I was feeling alone. That conversation was probably eight years ago, but I remember it so vividly. And the word that I actually used, I didn't say I feel so alone. I I said, I feel like I'm drowning. 
And I think that sometimes loneliness looks like, feels like you're drowning. Um, and besides having a newborn, we had, Elise was probably three to five months old. I mean, that alone can kind of spin you into um, just an overwhelming phase of life, right? You're learning so much. This person, you're totally responsible for them. You're their life source. Um, and so that alone can make you feel that way. But I think there were several things that happened over the course of a few years that led to just an overwhelming feeling. Uh, but when I stopped and had Elise, uh, the feelings caught up with me. And I'm going to list several things because I know that many of you have gone through these things over the last year, over the last several years, and they're changes that, that can leave you feeling very lonely. And the biggest one is when you make a move to a new city. And we have so many people here that have come in the last year. Um, when we were married, I think in the first five years, we had moved four times. Um, and I was in the middle of a new career, and that's another thing. So move, change of job, you usually that means you've changed your community. So people that you're close with, your family, your friends, um, you don't have those contacts. You have contact with them, right? Maybe sometimes through social media, but you lose something from that in-person um, contact with them that you need. Um, so I think uh, whenever I said I'm drowning, uh, I realized that several decisions we made had started to catch up with me. And I had been go, 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 and I was actually working as a flight attendant for a major airline. And I was surrounded with people, and I am that extrovert. I could make eye contact with strangers. Let's talk about, you know, whatever you want to. And I'm engaging with people all the time. But I also, I think I was even lonely then. Because you can be surrounded by people and making those extroverted connections, but not making true connection. And so we had moved, and I was go, go, go. You were go, go, go. We had new careers. Um, and I had not taken the time to really um, make roots and dig deep. And I, I do remember even leaving uh, our community when we moved the first time. And I thought, I've been with these people since I was 17. And honestly, they know too much. And I need to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, fast forward to those years later when I have a lease and I stopped moving so much and I realized what emptiness I had from not having that core group of people there, uh, older ladies in my church that I'm like, you know, what I wouldn't give for somebody that really knows me right now that can come just be with me. Um, so those were several things that I think led to that moment. You, you talk about... Um specifically talk about the loneliness of motherhood. It's really hard when you've got, specifically kids under five. You're at home. That's another state of being surrounded by people, yeah, yeah. yet feeling alone. And what, what was really hard for you is you, you went from being a career woman to feeling this call to stay home and, and raise Elise for a few years. And again, not everybody has that luxury, yeah. so I get that, right? So it's even more burden if you're carrying both of those. But I remember some days you would, I felt like, you were, again, I'm an introvert, right? But I feel like she would be pulling from me stuff I couldn't give her. And I realized she's been home all day talking, talking to a baby that can't talk back. And uh, even these days, it's like she can talk to our daughter, but there's not a lot of profundity to a five-year-old's yeah. conversation. Um, so you can't pour out the deepest parts of your heart. So talk about that of like, I think that, yeah, that's for moms with a lot of young children, too. Your children cannot satisfy your emotional needs <laughs> and because you're giving all of you're feeding all of their needs, emotional and, and everything. And even a husband um, can't always satisfy those needs. And I think even God in some way, I mean, he's going to satisfy the deepest parts of your spirit, but he created you to be, those needs to be met through the body. And you just look around you, like you have people here that are many different ages, have walked many different seasons of life, and that, that is as God intended for you to have people alongside of you that can understand where you're at or what you're going through. And um, so, I think that's an, so that's an important point there is you might need to be more patient than you want to be. I talked about this last week, how some of us were just not very patient. Building community, it takes time. And when you're starting from scratch... We want it to be just like it used to be at our old church, right? But it's not going to be that way. It's going to take time to build. Trust takes time to build. And I wish it was, I wish it was just instant connection, right? Um, but it's, it takes, so you got to be patient and you got to be kind with yourself. When you're going, there must be something wrong with me. I'm not connecting the way I used to with people. It's not that. It's just it takes time. And, and what's really hard is when you go into a community where all the people already know each other, 
and you're trying to find your place in there, one of the beautiful things about this church is a lot of these people already know each other, but they're welcoming. Mm -hmm. If you haven't noticed that, they're like, come on into the circle. There's room for more at the table. And I think that's a gift that, actually, I think that's a gift Natalie brings to the table. Um, Pastor Natalie is just, you're going to make me cry looking at you. (laughs) She just is like, bring them in. That's that beautiful extra version of hers. And it's also her own pain that she's felt. Yeah, and she's there's like, many, there's many room at the table like for that. everybody, man. And that's the beautiful thing yeah. about this church, right? But be patient. It's going to take time. It's not going to be an instant connection. It's not love at first sight, right? Be patient. And then I want to talk about the other thing, which she, she pointed out. When you feel that loneliness, the, ten- the tendency is to self-medicate. Yeah. Or distract and yourself. Yeah, and I'm not just talking about chugging a bottle of alcohol. Talk about what self-medication looks yeah, like for I mothers. Think, uh, well, it's real easy. On your phone, you have all the entertainment and connection you could possibly desire, and we all do it. It's so easy, especially when you're alone and overwhelmed and you need a break from the little people. Um, pick up that phone, and, oh, look look what they're doing. Oh, that looks cool. Oh, look, their children have clothes on. That must be, ni- <laughs> that must be nice. Um, and just keep scrolling. Wow, they all sat together for a family photo. How did that happen? Oh, she's running her career and raising all these children. That's amazing. Um, but, you know, you start, and it's cool, right? It's entertaining. And you can even have forums where you, like, you're, you know, troubleshooting ideas. What did you do for teething? And you're going to get 100 or more different answers about how moms help, did that. And that, that's a cool part of social media, and in a way it is connecting you. But it's also deceiving you because, you know, you think as soon as you put that down, what do you feel? Kind of like a little bit of emptiness because you haven't made true connection with anyone on there. Um, and and you've you're also, comparing. You've also just showed yourself 100 images of somebody's snapshot of them living their best life. And then you look around at your house and your naked children and you're like, oh, my God, <laughs> what am I doing with my life? But it's just very deceptive um, when you, you know, you're looking at that glance of that life and it, it just kind of tells your brain like you're missing out and you're, you know, don't have that. And then I just want to explain what happens when you're in person and you start talking to people, because sometimes I think we forget the power of being around people. And it can be uncomfortable at first, looking people in the eye, like asking about the weather um, and how do you get there. But, you know, over time, you start to get more comfortable with people. And there's stuff that happens in person that can never happen online. And some of that is, you know, even this morning, it's happened several times where I've seen people hugging each other, praying for people. And that's because they've spent time and they know what's going on in each other's lives. But it it starts with, you know, how are you? I'm good. No, really, how are you? And then someone, you know, you start talking, well, you know, this happened this week, and it was kind of weird. And you know what? Actually, I'm kind of angry about that, or I'm kind of sad about that, or whatever it is. This is how women do it, mostly. I'm sure men do it, too. (laughs) But before you know it, this whole series of things is unraveling before you, and that can't always happen online, because it's something organic that happens when you're with people, and what people, what the body helps you do is you're processing your life together, and that's a gift that God gives us through connection that's a, a deep emotional need that can be met by being around people day in and day out. And sometimes it might start off mundane and it might start off real awkward, but you know, don't give up. <laughs> There's light on the other side of that. You, you, um, when we were talking about this this week, she was very resistant to me to doing this, by the way. <laughs> this is a sacrifice for her. So uh, she, she's, she, she'd been praying, and she said, you know, I was reminded of, of this vision she had several years ago when we first came to Crossroads. And I got to tell you something. I didn't realize how lonely we were until mm-hmm. we came to Crossroads, and we got tied in with people, Marcus and Natalie specifically, who knew me a long time. And uh, again, you know, I hate it when they bring up how stupid I was when I was 18, but, but that's the gift, right? They've seen you mature, and they've believed in you all that way, Right. And, uh, but Emily had this vision that uh, I thought it was really powerful. I thought it would be really helpful if you'd share that. Yeah. Honestly, I had forgot about it. It was several years ago. I think we've been at this church now almost seven years. And um, we had started, I mean, I don't know, maybe we were here a year or so. And I don't remember what brought this vision on. And not honestly, like I said, I had forgotten about it. Um, but when we started discussing this loneliness, this came back to me in such vivid detail. Um, and it was a picture of this young woman and she was looking up at the sky, and she was just heavy with, with grief, with sorrow, with loneliness. And tears were just coming down her face, and they were just kept coming and coming like rivers of tears. But they were falling on the ground. 
And then you could see as they soaked the earth and then they started to go deeper in the ground. And then this root system started to form. And the roots just kept going deeper and deeper and stronger and stronger. But you know, on the surface, you couldn't see that anything was happening. Um, and what I'm getting with is this is sometimes loneliness, it doesn't have a quick fix. And sometimes there's things that you go through in life too that God's working things in your heart that maybe wouldn't have even happened if you hadn't had those seasons where you're alone. And there's many things that kind of can spin you into a loneliness, which is also loss and grief um, and just things that you're just disappointments that you've dealt with over the years. So as, as the roots begin to grow, you know, eventually this, this tree starts to form and it, it grows and grows. And before you know it, she's covered in the canopy of leaves of this tree. And um, it was just such an image to me. And I know it wasn't just for me. It was for just women or, or people that are going through, like, God's not wasting your tears or your sadness. He's going to use it to form something that's going to bring life. It's going to bring shade. It's going to bring beauty to other people that are around you. It's a, as we were talking about that, a verse came to both of our minds, which is one of, it's a, one of those beautiful psalms. It says this. It says, those who sow or plant in tears will reap with shouts of joy. He who goes out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, will come home with shouts of joy, bringing the harvest with him. And I think what that's saying is sometimes we feel like our tears, they're just falling and there's nothing happening. But if in the darkness, you'll trust that God's doing something through your tears and don't run from the discomfort. Mm -hmm. Walk through the darkness and God can take those tears, the tears you're feeling over your child who's just running from God and you're like, I didn't raise her this way or raise him this way. The tears you're feeling over your marriage and just this is not the way it was supposed to look. The tears you're feeling over your own life, like I was supposed to have more, mm -hmm. more in me than this. Um, if you'll not self-medicate, not run from it, but just say, God, I'm trusting these tears that I'm, 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 they're dropping on the ground. They're going deep. And just like that vision Emily had, you're eventually going to reap a harvest of joy if you don't give up. Oh, There's another verse she brought to mind. Why don't you read this one, Emily? Yeah, I love this one. This is one. actually from Psalm 139, and this is one of my favorite chapters. And if you are struggling with loneliness or just feeling so alone, please go to Psalm 139 and read the whole thing. It talks so much about how God knows every little detail about you. Um, and it talks about how he even knows the words you're going to speak before they come out of your mouth. Like, what? Um, and then this part, he's talking about how he'll find you no matter where you are. And then in this, it says, if I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me. Even if you feel like you're drowning in darkness, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day for the darkness is as light to you. And when I read that, that spoke to me so much, and it made me think of that vision as well, uh, how much you could feel like you're totally alone, and there's darkness, and nothing is coming out of this, but you just don't know what he's doing behind the scenes, what roots are growing deep, and what kind of tree that's going to bring later on. But the key is, too, like, that girl's face was turned upward. She was giving over her pain and surrendering those things, the loneliness to him, and he brought forth the life out of that. Which brings us back to that quote by C.S. Lewis. If I find myself desires which nothing in this world can satisfy, look up. You were made for something else. And in this world, this veil of tears, um, don't run from the discomfort of it because here's the cool thing. Jesus says, look, I'll never leave you or forsake you. And you go, well, I wish he was right there with me. Here's the wild thing about it. He is there right now with you. Mm -hmm. And the way he does it is, you know what the church is called? The body of Christ. Which is why it's so imperative, something that the apostle Paul said. He said, let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting meeting together. And this is really important because community, guys, is the answer to your loneliness. The body of Christ is the hope of the world. This church right here and all of the churches in this community are the hope of the world. And when you get tied in with that, you literally get tied into the tangible hands and feet of Jesus. And you go, yeah, but these people are messed up. I don't know how he does it, but he works through goobers like me. 
and goobers like you. And he works through all of us. But it's not going to happen by default. It's going to take pressing in. In those moments when you go, ah, I'll pull myself together and then I'll come back to church. You say, no, that's the moment you need to get into church. That's the statistics say, you know, most of us, we, you know, they, they, it says most of the people, they actually pull away from social connection. But the number one predictor, this is scientific. A guy named uh, Sean Acor said this in his book, Happiness Advantage. He said, the number one predictor of, social, of success in stressful situations is social engagement. But what most of us do is we pull away when the marriage starts to struggle. And you go, well, we'll, we'll get our marriage back together because we don't want anybody to see that we're struggling. Instead of just coming and just laying it all out and going, hey, body of Christ, we need help here. There's a verse that says, he who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He breaks out against all sound judgment. In mental health counseling, which I've been involved in for years, the number one predictor that somebody's going to a bad place is when they isolate themselves. Some of you right now, you're isolated out of your own choice. Some of you are isolated because you moved. Some of you are isolated because you just got a bunch of rugrats running around and you just can't get away. You just, it's hard to get away from parenting. <laughs> but maybe this is a season where you just need to go, okay, I'm going to do what I can to stay engaged with community. I'm not going to neglect the meeting together. And yes, it is really hard to get all those kids ready for church. I hate it. It'd be a lot easier to just sit at home and watch on TV and get the illusion that I'm getting the community. But you got to make the effort. You put in the work. And it says, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the, more, all the more as you see the day drawing near. Guys, as the world gets crazier and crazier and we feel more and more isolated, the enemy wants to isolate you. It's his number one tool. If you think about a, an animal on the African savanna, what's the one that gets picked off in all the documentaries you've seen? The cheetah goes for the loner. That one little gazelle that thinks they can handle it on their own. Bam! That's who he goes for. He picks off those who have separated themselves from the group. The community needs you. You need the community. And that is the cure that God has given us for loneliness. So if you're carrying a weight right now of loneliness, you're sitting right now. If you're watching online, you need to get in here at some point. You're sitting in the place right now that is the cure for loneliness. The body of Christ. Jesus. The hands and feet of Jesus right here. You guys receive that? Anything you want to close us out with, Emily? Well, maybe one more thing. I'm thinking, you know, in those conversations that you have with people, you kind of have two roles going. You know, one, one might be talking and expressing all their emotions, and then one is an active listener. And I think that's part of our problem, too, is that sometimes we're so overwhelmed with our own issues um, that we haven't become good at listening. And I'm really grateful for so many people, even in this body, that have taken the time to listen to me ramble out my thoughts and feelings and how much that brings me life. And so, you know, we always need to be either in one role or the other. Either you're, you're in a place where you're, somebody's helping you process your life or you're in the role where you're taking the time to ask those questions like, what's going on with you? And then really listening to that person and you're giving them life by giving them your ear. Yeah. Why don't you pray for us? Lord, we just thank you so much, Lord. We thank you for mothers. We thank you for the gift of women and even their unique way of connecting and expressing that, Lord. And, and we pray that you would help us to be better communicators, to be better connectors, to, to serve our body in the way that they need, Lord, to make us aware of what's going on with people. Bring it to our attention, Lord. If there's, you know, just shine the light on our own heart what's going on in there and things that we need to work on that are going to help us get us in a healthier place and, and help those alongside us get to a better place. And we just thank you so much for your grace. If you're Amen. here this morning and you have not given your life to Jesus, I'm going to give you a chance to do that. Uh, we're going to say a prayer. It's just going to be a short, quick prayer. But if you say it and you mean it in your heart, God's going to come and transfer you out of the kingdom of darkness into his kingdom of glorious light. It starts by saying this prayer. Let's all say it together. Lord Jesus, we repent of our sin. We turn from our way, we turn to your way. Help us walk in your truth. Amen. Hey, if you just said that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. We've got some resources for you back here. We'd love to give those to you. You guys stand. I pray you have a blessed, amazing week. Get connected with people. Make the effort. It is worth it. The body of Christ is the answer for loneliness. Be blessed. You're dismissed. If you are ever in the Seguin area, 
come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.